today we are joined by Poinsettia. She is from Toronto, Canada and her style to me is a mix of everything. I love how she gets, she puts herself together. Um, it's very brave, very unique. And I am excited to have her on the show today. So join us as we step out of style with Poinsettia. your look thank you first let's see what you're wearing um, i chose this outfit because well most of my wardrobe like literally 90 percent of it is thrifted or secondhand vintage or something like that mm -hmm. so i really like to mix um modern pieces with really vintage or old looking pieces yeah. to create an interesting look so <clears throat> obviously the toque is just kind of whatever i always go a little bit crazy with the accessories the fun fact i don't actually have pierced ears so all the earrings that i find and wear are clip-ons <laughs> oh my god really this one is actually supposed to be a tie clip uh -huh. but it clips onto my ear and is quite comfortable so i was like yep that works <laughs> very creative i like that then this piece is a really cool belt that I found at a secondhand store a long time ago. Um, I'm just wearing it as like a harness instead, but I wear it as a belt a lot too. I just have like a little tank top underneath and my favorite skirt. Got like some shiny pieces on them. They're so 90s. Uh, my name is Poinsettia Lane. My whole life I've gone with Tessa because I was embarrassed about it, but mm. In recent years, I've been like, eh, fuck it. I'm just going with poinsettia. I feel very at home in Toronto. I guess something about me would be I'm a bit of a lone wolf. Like I have close friends, but I, because we travel so much, I very rarely get to spend a lot of time with them. So, okay. Yeah, that's something about me. What would you say makes you out of style? I just want to say that I love that out of style name or brand Thank you. because my whole life I've felt very out of place. I've, I've really learned to embrace it mm -hmm. and um, so for me out of style is finding confidence within yourself and not looking to other people for validation. I can't imagine feeling or I guess looking the same as everyone else. I don't know what it is. I'm kind of a shy person. So for me, clothes is how I speak. It's my language. It doesn't take effort for me to put a look together that stands out. It's not work, if you know what I mean. A lot of people do feel, especially when they're younger, um, they don't fit in. Mm -hmm. right? So it's important for people to hear that. Mm -hmm. Your style obviously is very unique. Um, where does it come from and have you always been this free with your style? How much I travel, it has a big influence on how I dress. The places that I have been, I've really enjoyed their culture and seeing other cultures and, and taking pieces of that with me. When I was younger, I still was out of style in a way because I was ahead of the trends. Back then, because I didn't have a lot of confidence, it wasn't as easy, but it was still something that wasn't really a choice for me. It was just like, this is what I like. This is how I'm expressing myself and doing it. How has trends or society's expectations affected your own personal style? I've always been inspired by certain trends and I don't really want to discount them just because they are trendy. I think using trends to um, have fun with style is awesome, but waiting for it to become popular and then hopping on it just because it is trendy is a little bit different. If someone is having trouble with their personal style, what advice would you give them to get started? It's almost like kind of spiritual in a way because you really have to like dig deep into yourself. I like to get to know my client on a deeper level so that I can nail it because it, like you said about trends or whatever, it's never going to be real style. It's just going to be a person wearing what's trendy, which is to me not style at all. So. It's really about like getting to know the person and who they are and what they want in life and all those questions that are really important to um, what you wear and how you present yourself. Make an inspiration board of looks that you love and not looks that you think you would look good in, but looks that you love. Pick your top three favorite pieces out of your wardrobe. I kind of use them as building blocks. So what do I love about these pieces? Why do I end up wearing them so much? 
it would give you insight into um, kind of what your personal style uh, needs, like what your personal style needs to facilitate. Oh, and I wrote something kind of corny, but it's really true. <laughs> it's stay true to you and let the world inspire, not dictate what you choose to wear. Yeah. So that's kind of, yeah. That's I really think good. that's like a good thing for people to stick to is like, you know, wear what you really love and don't let people tell you what to wear or what not to wear. All right. So another <laughs> question I have for you um, are what are some of your favorite sustainable shops? Um, like a huge, huge advocate of um, secondhand shopping. I feel like it's literally going to help save the planet. Yes. It's kind of difficult to expect everyone to do it because it's like a, well, I'm sure you know because you have a beautiful collection of, of secondhand stuff that it's hard to sift through all this, like, I don't want to say garbage, but like all the stuff that isn't necessarily wearable yeah. to find the gems that people are really, you know, going to see value in. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to say is my favorite sustainable shops are the ones that you make that are curated by someone who knows what they're looking for. They're, they're sourcing out high quality, beautifully made clothing that has a lot of value and, and you're having to pay so much less for it, mm -hmm. but you get the same quality as like luxury items. What does sustainability in the fashion industry mean to you? To me, clothing in general, um, should be valuable. We don't really value it. We're like, oh yeah, a t-shirt shouldn't be more than $20. Mm. But, yeah. you know, do you want that t-shirt to last? And that's why I love shopping secondhand and vintage too, because you get the details. You get like, to me, that's luxury. Yeah. Is you're getting quality yeah. and you're getting, you know, attention to detail, mm. which you don't get in fast fashion at all. If you could not buy those, I don't know, five dresses that are $20 each, save that money, buy one thing that's quality that will last you forever, that's worth it. How would you describe self-confidence and would you consider yourself a confident person? I do consider myself a confident person. I am actually quite shy and I feel like some people think you can't be shy and confident me at the too. same time, but I'm very much both. Confidence for me means that I'm able to kind of forget about how other people are seeing me so that I can see other people. Because I think a lot of people get stuck on, you know, how people are seeing them. It inhibits their clarity when they're talking to people. It really can kind of blind you to how people are actually perceiving you as opposed to how you are thinking that they're perceiving you in that moment. You're kind of selling yourself short and also the other person the other person's focused on you so you should be focusing on the other person what makes you confident and what makes you lack confidence i've never really thought about this before but i love your questions by the way because they are questions that are super meaningful to me and that i've never been asked before so Thank it's you. very special to get to actually say these things out loud yes. um like if i ever need a confidence boost and i'm feeling crappy about myself or whatever I think about how my love, loved ones view me, mm -hmm. like they're, you know, how they see me. And that really makes me feel 100% better because if I get caught up in what society's view of beauty is or expectations, then I really get down on myself because I'm really not up to that standard. But if I think of, you know, how my loved ones see me and how proud of me they are and, and that they actually you know see me as beautiful and um, useful <laughs> then I feel great about myself because um, those are the people that matter to me the most. It's funny um, our loved ones always see the best in us all the time and yeah. we really we tend to be a little harder on ourselves that does help um, when you mm -hmm. think about how your loved ones see you. You're opening my mind, uh, Poinsettia. <laughs> the thing that makes me lack confidence, I think, is when I do get caught up in myself. So sometimes I'll get stuck on one thing, you know, like my weight. I'm not eating healthy. Oh, I have 
bad skin at this moment. Usually it's something physical. It really does diminish my confidence. And it's kind of all I can think about. Even, you know, if I'm in a social situation or whatever, I know I have zits on my face. I'm like, oh, fuck, I look crappy. And that's all I can think about. And it's, so it's really hard sometimes to get over that. We're all beautiful the way we are. We really are. We're all unique. We're all different. If it's weight, if it's whatever, pimples, it doesn't matter. Like, this is what we're given. And instead of us, mm -hmm. you know, constantly saying bad things to ourselves in our head, because subconsciously, sometimes we don't even realize we're doing that. Just turn those bad things into good. What do you think, like, yours comes from? I guess in a way, maybe my insecurity is that, like, I can change what I wear. That's what I have control over. But my body sometimes is not so controllable. So I guess maybe, like, that I'm not in full control of my body, maybe, mm -hmm. is, like, where that insecurity stems from. I've never said that out loud either. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Um... <laughs> Well, it makes me feel better that I could actually pinpoint it. The thing that makes me insecure is that I don't want people to know that I have these problems or these issues and that I have not been able to fix them so far, yeah. <laughs> which is terrible to say, but it's, yeah. I think that is what it is for sure. Yeah, it's good to yeah. be aware of what it is and how you feel about it. So then you could turn it around because you're aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Can I ask you a question? Of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious, because um, I see those pretty clothes behind you. Yes. Can you show me like two or three of your favorite pieces oh, that you yes. have over there? Absolutely. Let me I stand up. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, they look like turkey feathers. Yeah, basically. This is a skirt. The lighting is so terrible. Ooh, leaves. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait to shoot this. That's I haven't shot it yet. Yeah, that is gorgeous. And it comes with a belt. And then cool. this polka dotted piece is really nice. It's um, wow. pants and a blazer. It's pants? Yeah, there are pants in here. I just folded them up. I should hang it better, but... That's so <laughs> it's a whole that suit. That is so cool. <laughs> but, yeah. I love the name of your shot, like, High Fashion Thrift. It's yeah. so relatable for me because I feel like I dress more high fashion wearing thrifted or vintage pieces yes. than the people in the fashion industry who are buying you know Fendi and Gucci and all that like I feel more luxurious yes. because I'm wearing something that is you know I'm wearing like real fur and leather and like silk and beautiful fabrics yes. that I mean most of the time you know the stuff that the average person can kind of afford from Fendi or whatever, it's still polyester. Like it's not, you know, even the luxury brands now mm -hmm. are very much like decreasing their quality yeah. in some, you know, in most ways. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, I'm just really excited that um, people are kind of starting to realize that like the value of, of vintage and thrifted stuff and like mm -hmm. how amazing of pieces you can really find that are, luxury like it's actual luxury continue being who you are continue being such a great person and i'm so honored to have you um on this interview thank you so much brownie you're very very welcome